Hi, Dr. Romano. I'm trying to do the stereochemistry of a seahorse, and I can't find it anywhere in my study guide. Do you think you could help me? Two things. First, it's not called a seahorse, but it's called a sawhorse. And secondly, throw your study guide in the garbage. And why don't we learn the fundamentals instead of thinking study guide is gonna do one bit. Come over here and let's learn the chemistry and stop the foolishness. There's no such thing as a seahorse. In organic chemistry, young lady, you must be thinking of biology, and that's why everything you were Googling came up aquatic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what we call a sawhorse. But before we do so, I want you to look at two molecules. One's ephedrine and one pseudoephedrine. If you ever ingest any of these molecules, these would be stimulants. This is what would keep you awake. Or if you needed to study, it would keep you awake. Now. What we want to do is we, let's do the configuration of the first molecule. Now, if you covered this side up with your hand, the right side, the OH would be the first priority. This group would be the second. Number four is a dash, which means it's in the correct position. And I'm hoping you can see it's an R. We've done this in another tape. So you get an R configuration here. And then if you cover this side up with your left hand, the nitrogen is number one, and this side is gonna be number two. It looks like an R, but because the group of lowest priority is a wedge, it's gonna be an S. So you get an R and an S on this side. If you do this, I want you as an exercise to confirm that this would be the exact same. And if I ever asked you, how does ephedrine and pseudoephedrine relate? Well, you have an RS and an SS. So that means they are diastereomers, diastereomers. And being diastereomers, they would have different physical properties, such as boiling point, melting point, et cetera. Now, in this example, I put this in what we call the sawhorse form. Now, what I want you to do is to take a look at what I've done. If you just gently move this down, you would see the phenyl group. This group is going in the back of the page. You got this. This is going out of the page and it's going to the right. Now you can see that if you just gently move this up, there's the methyl group. The, the dash is going in the same direction as an H. So that would be to the left. And then this H is going out of the board in the same direction as the OH. This here is what we call the sawhorse form. Now, what we want to do is to get the configuration on a sawhorse. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to do this. I would take the sawhorse and you're going to pretend that you're looking at it over here. I always like to stand to the left of the molecule. So if you're to the left of the molecule and you're looking at this and I draw a Newman and what I see, I see one group going down and there's my fennel. I see one group coming off this carbon. So remember this carbon, is this carbon. To the left is an H, to the right is an OH. And then I go to the back, that's this carbon, that's the circle. There's a methyl going up. To the left of me is the methyl amino group. There's the CH3N group. And then there's an H. All right. What I've now done is convert it into a Newman. Now, here's the gimmick. What I like to do is how do we find an RS on a Newman? What I do is this. I'm gonna very gently move or rotate the front carbon, very gently. So this group, I'm gonna gently rotate until I get it into this form. I call this the peace sign. I like to make a peace sign. So there's my peace sign. The H is going up if you rotate it, the OH is to the right, and the phenyl group is to the left. That I think you got. Now, what we're gonna do is we want to have the back now turn the back a little bit if you rotate the back a little bit i think you would see that the methyl will go here the methyl amino group will go here and that h will go down so i want to get it into this form now once i'm here i'm ready for the kill watch what i do the top of the newman or the front of the newman is the top of the fissure so there's an h to the left of me is a fennel. Then there's an OH. Now, I'm hoping right off the bat you can see 
that this is group number one. The rest of this group, which is going to contain a carbon and a nitrogen, would be number two. So right off the bat, you can see that this is an R. I'm hoping you can see that. Now, here's the gimmick. What I like to do is I switch the two groups that are on the side of the Newman. You see, like, you got the methyl group and the CH3NH group. Switch those two groups. So if you switch those two groups, it becomes this. That's the trick. So now, if you cover this up, this group is one. Where I covered my hand is two. And I'm hoping you can see it's an S. So you go back and boom. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to try it for this molecule. So what I've done is we did it for this, and I want you to take this just the way I did, put it into the Newman, and then convert it into the Fisher, and you would see if you did it correctly, you would get an SS. So one more time, what I like to do, and this isn't in any of the textbooks. I don't have one single book. The Klein book, the Carey book, Solomon, Bruce, Jones, Wade, McMurray. I never really see them really manipulating sawhorses. Sawhorses were very, very big in the 1950s and 60s and even early 70s, but I just find they're not used so much anymore, but I sort of still like them. It gives you a nice perspective. So one more time, you take the sawhorse, convert it into the Newman, but anytime you do a Newman, convert the Newman into a Fisher. But whenever I do a fissure, I always want to get it in the sign of a P sign, because that's the easiest way, I think, to look at it. You have Professor my laugh when I say always convert it into the P sign, but you let your professor laugh all he wants. I always hit the problem, and I hit the bullseye every time by converting the Newman into a P sign, and then I go into a fissure. I hope that helped on a very rare problem. Um, for the dad exam, you just make sure you can do R and S and you can understand if you were given two problems like this or two examples and I said, what's their relationship? And you would tell me they are diastereomers. I do have a problem involving Newman's into Fisher on the Dot Destroyer. So take a look at that. If you got any questions, I'll see you in study group on my Facebook page. All right. Good day to you.